Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek at the pre-release of NAN 2.0. The things we'll look at in this video are that the nodes are different. They look more futuristic. They're like this flat design compared to the V1. Nodes like the AI agent node, the chat node, the wait node, nodes that take a couple of seconds to execute. Now they have this like loading execution graphic. It looks really, really neat. We have a, an updated save functionality here. It's not auto save just yet. I think that's coming out in January. I read that somewhere, but this is a little bit different to V1. There's also a different way to publish your workflows or to turn them on so they're live on the web. And on the left-hand side, uh, there's actually a quicker way to access the settings panel. So in the V1 version, you'd actually have to click your icon in the bottom left-hand corner, then open up your settings panel. So yeah, over here, the actual settings panel is a little bit different. Now we'll be looking at one more different, like one more change in this V2 version over the V1. And that's the breaking change of when you execute a sub workflow. I'm gonna demonstrate to you that when you execute a sub workflow, the data that's in the execution of the sub workflow comes back to the primary workflow. So yeah, if you have execute sub workflows, that's gonna be important for you too. Now, before I go on with the video, I just want to be super clear. This is not the official release of NAN 2.0. This is actually a pre-release version that's available on the public NAN GitHub page. Any of you can come onto here and then run this on your local machine, which is what I'm doing right now. So it's not the official version. It's just a pre-release that is publicly available as well. Now, uh, let's actually take a look at what's happening with the V2. So some things that I have noticed is actually just copy this across to a V1. So back on my V1 canvas, I can just paste in a V2 workflow, which makes sense. The actual underlying JSON structure of the workflows remains the same. Over here, if I just hover over these connectors, it's orange, whereas the uh, V2 version, whoops, the V2 version is now a kind of a pop out effect, which is pretty cool. Again, I like how it's more flat on a canvas, it just looks more futuristic. It makes me a bit more excited. I kind of like it. So let's write hi there. And then we see that execution um, graphic. So how are you today? And that's the agent node. That's the chat node. They have this like circular loading effect. Super, super neat. Otherwise, the rest of the configuration inside the agent step and the other nodes is pretty much what we are used to seeing. No major UI or graphics changes in these configurations. Uh, even on this side panel over here, it's pretty similar or I think it's the same to the V1, unless this pre-release is going to have like even more changes to the actual public, the actual version, the actual official, official launch of the V2. Um, maybe something will change here, but so far it looks to be the exact same as before. So let's look at these guardrails nodes. So yeah, everything has this like, I think the V1 typically had this kind of like white or light gray outline, whereas now there is none of that, there is no outline. And then these like connectors are a little bit more bigger and more pronounced as well. So yeah, that's that's really, really cool. If I just show you the V1 save functionality here, just gonna click save, takes about a second. It's super fast at saving the workflow. Over here on the V2, if I hit save, that's instantaneous. So I think that uh, that's like a, a precursor to actually the auto save functionality, which I think is gonna have to be instantaneous because it has to get every change on your canvas. So we'll just look at it again. I'll just move this a little bit, hit save, super fast, like lightning fast. That's really, really cool. Now, if I wanna publish this workflow and actually have it accessible somewhere online, I would come into here, hit the publish button, and then I can like do version one, and then, you know, initial draft for public testing. And I hit publish, and now my workflow is live, and I, I can actually run it, run it on the web. And if I want to unpublish that workflow, so previously we just had this like little button over here. You can activate your workflow. Okay, I'm missing a the chat model over here. And then to deactivate it, you just flick this again and it deactivates it. Whereas over here, you don't just press publish again. That just goes to push another version. You come into your settings or your three buttons over here. And then you just go unpublish, which is right below the settings. You hit un unpublish and now it's back into the draft mode. So with the publish functionality, I actually haven't seen... Again, maybe this pre-release is not what the official release will do, but I haven't seen a space where you can actually like attach a version to the public URL. So what I mean by that is like, let's say I'm building out this initial version and I have a test, a test instance and I put that as like my test V1. 
for example, in retail AI, you can actually publish multiple versions of your workflow and then attach a different version to the phone number that you're running. So you can have like a V1, you attach it to your phone number. And then if you publish three or four changes as you're actually testing out that same workflow to like V2, V3, V4, it doesn't get pushed into your phone number until you push it to your phone number. So I made that observation by going into the webhooks node. So into here. And then I thought, okay, like let's say for example, I have my public execution over here, my public URL. I thought that if I click on public URL, I might have a drop down here to just choose which version of this workflow I want to attach to the live URL, but there's nothing here. And maybe I'm using this wrong, I'm not too sure, but it is pretty cool and I'm keen to see what happens as we progress with this. Now, uh, left-hand side settings panel. So if I just go back into my V1 settings panel, we have the overview, we have personal, and then we have this like, you have to go into here first and then click on settings. And then you get into your settings over here. Whereas now you can just click on settings and automatically jump into any of these. But if you click on any of these, leave without saving, you actually just go back to this same, same settings panel that we were used to before. And yeah, it just looks pretty much the same as well. And just to note, yeah, my version that I'm running here is the 2.0 RC3. And yeah, that was just one of the versions from the, from the GitHub page as well. Okay, so now that we looked at the initial changes of V2 to V1, I uh, just wanna go through some of these other stuff over here. So like the settings panel all looks the same. Like I mentioned before, when you're going through your node selection over here, it all looks the same. So text classifier, all the nodes have this updated style to them, but otherwise the functionality here or the UI, the navigation is the same. The executions panel also looks to be the same evaluations tab. So all the stuff that we're used to is, um, yeah, it looks to be just like the V1 version. And I like that because if there was some massive changes in how you actually interact with NAN as a tool, which would just mean that you kind of have to like relearn to use the tool. And I don't think that NAN in their best interest, it wouldn't be to like fully redesign the sidebar unless they were positively sure it would like improve the actual experience of how you use this. Now, the final thing that I want to look at is the uh, breaking change. So I have a breaking change workflow here, and this is my parent workflow. And just to explain it quickly, I've got a click to execute the workflow. My edit fields node is just a variable called type, and it's returning a um, the type equals parent. So parent is the value. And then I'm pushing it into my execute sub workflow. My sub workflow is just this workflow here on a canvas. So I'm triggering from the primary workflow. I have a wait node for 70 seconds. So this functionality only happens from what I've read above 60 seconds wait time. So I'm just using 70 seconds. And then I set a new value here where I say type equals child. So in my primary workflow, I have type equals parent over here. And then in my sub workflow, I have type equals child. So what we're gonna see is as I execute this, we wait for 70 seconds, and then we're actually gonna return type equals child back to our primary workflow, which is really cool because that actually means now you can have a human in the loop node in your, in your sub workflow, wait for the human to return back like I approve or I deny, and then push that back up to your primary workflow and then use that as, you know, for the remainder of your sequence. So coming back into here, we're now in our primary workflow. I'm going to hit execute. We're going to wait roughly 70 seconds. And then I'm going to, I'm actually going to come back to here in, in like 70 seconds. So we see what happens. So right now it's just executing. I've got my option to be wait for sub workflow completion, which just means instead of just progressing through this node, wait for everything to happen in the sub workflow and then see what happens, like what kind of data we get back. So the input of this workflow was type equals parent. And in just a second, there we go, we just finished and we have type equals child. So on the NAN breaking changes page, that's just what's happening over here. They have the primary workflow where they're executing a sub workflow and then they have some value that's set in the sub workflow. So for the initial, like the V1 version, the way that the engine would execute the workflow is that whatever value you pass through into the execute node, that's the value that would actually come out on the other end of the execute node. So this would just be a very linear progression with data and you wouldn't return anything from that child workflow, from that execute sub workflow. 
But now in the V2, which is what we've seen, instead of just linearly passing the data from our primary workflow all the way across, we're pulling in that data from the uh, sub workflow and then using that for something. So for example, execute like a, it's a human in the loop node. You wait for the feedback from the human. It's approved, it's denied. And then your execute workflow can now have like a branch and you can go to the approved branch or the denied branch and continue with your workflow. Okay, so that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoy this sneak peek and I'll see you in the next one.